Is my audio coming through? Hello? Any audio coming through? Your PFP is so far serving holy shit. But anyways, let's go. Um, I'm more specifically concerned because the Hilbert of Sales products isn't like some predominant objection I make towards infinity. This is like um, something which I use to argue on intuitive, but not an argument against the metaphysical or the logical impossibility of such. Yeah, People like really Which specific well, proposition did you want to discuss out of like the ones that you put? Um, Sorry, that I was actually going to get onto this, but he interrupted me. Anyway. But the proposition I'm, I'm really concerned to debate, I'm not really concerned, but more interested in debating you about, is the idea that you believe that whatever argument I have for what brute contingency is impossible is going to be trash. So I'm going to see how you object the argument. I'm going to get the formal argument, I'm going to post it in chat, I'm going to see your objection towards the arguments. Hopefully, that actually meets the expectations I Pardon. Can I debate you? Yeah, after I'm dealing with this, after I just I'm want to smack you around retard. for a little bit. Yeah, it's cool. I'm just going to dunk on this retard yeah. real quick. Hold on. Sorry, I'm just like waiting dunk on for you? this trash argument to appear on the chat. It's like not there yet. Can you? Wait, are you making the proposition that the argument is trash right now, or just like speculating? <laughs> I'm just waiting. For Let me know if you're willing to retry this claim first. I'm just waiting. Do you for from the, the proposition that the proposition that the argument is trash? I'm just waiting. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the argument why it's trash before I can present the argument. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for this garbage argument to appear in chat. Okay, so are you making the claim that the argument is garbage? So some of the argument is explained out this garbage. I just think that there's like a, a very high likelihood the argument is garbage. Okay, cool. So the likelihood is just going to be relative to your personal experiences. Correct? Are you going to post the argument? Of course, I'm going to hold on to yours. Hey, I'm there. What's going on? Hey, how's it going, Mason? Wait, can this, can I just be a, this like brushed Apollo, up? This Apollo guy says he has like an argument that brute contingencies are impossible. Oh yeah, I've been, I um yeah, he actually said this before. Okay, let's actually. I'm curious to see what the argument is now. Oh, I'm glad I joined in just in time. By the way, I just started recording. Oh, uh, it's already recording. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. The premises do you disagree with? Yeah, let me read through it. Yep. Sorry, what do you take brute to mean? I just take it to mean unexpected. I just, <laughs> so you started this debate with one of the most retarded questions. Okay, I gotcha. Wait, before I even do this debate real quick, I want to make sure I want to make sure the recording about is the VC. Even though Mace is recorded, I want to make sure I'm recording. So yeah. Cool. So I'm, at, I'm I'm clarifying the terms of the argument. So usually the way brutes understood is like lacking explanation. I'm making sure that that's how you're using it. Is that how you're using it? So I say that usually the way in which the term brute is being used is just lacking explanation. I think that definition in itself is vague. I think when you're talking about explanations in the context of brute entities, we're talking about causal explanations. Correct. Yeah, so in the context of the argument, all I'm talking about here is just causal explanations, not just a lack of explanation. Yeah, so you mean brute in terms of causal explanations? Yep. Okay, so what, um, here's, here's like the first question, like what's the argument for P3? Well, let me check P3 real quick. If simple, then it would exist in all metaphysically possible worlds. Yeah, so it's just going to be based on the dichotomy, right? So. The argument starts from saying for any object X, it is immunologically simple or immunologically complex. So this is going to be a true dichotomy, obviously. So if the immunologically complex being or any immunologically complex being requires a simple being in all possible worlds, then that means under that first form, it is entailed that there's a immunologically simple being. And under the second form, there has to be a immunologically simple being because it is already established that there's a immunologically simple being. So what you're going to have to argue right now, or ask me to argue, I should say, is Apollo, what's the argument for why a set of neurologically complex beings require a neurologically simple being for its own existence? 
No, sorry, that's not what I have to ask. Like, so what premise one is saying? That's what you have to ask. Yeah, sorry, sorry. What? So what I think you guys are going to say just complete gibberish and return. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So what you don't have to say sorry, return. Sorry. Sorry. Like, help your writer. Can you? Can you just like? Can you? Can, can you like stop down? starting just making the point, yeah, please? Apollo, can you pipe down for a second? I, the, the way you've been talking so much in the chat, I expect so much better from you. Yeah. So. Can make the point. Stop stuttering. Can you just mute him? Just like mute him. Just make the point, retard. For a second, so I can explain why you're wrong. Okay. So. Premise one is just saying that for any object x, that x is either meriologically complex or meriological simple, which is just to say. Yeah, I just said it a while ago. Sorry, while ago. sorry, which is just to say that it's either that it's either composite or non-composite. Is that what is that what? Okay, no shit, Sherlock. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So is the only is the answer the first premise? Yeah. So then premise one is just this conditional that if it's composite, then it's necessarily not a uh, brute fact, given that it's explained partially in terms of the things that it's composed of. And then premise three says if it's simple, it would exist in all metaphysically possible worlds. Now, nothing that you just yes. said supports premise three. So I'm just going to ask you again, what's the argument for premise three? I specifically told you, and if you actually tracked the response I made towards your dumb response and question, I, spe I specifically told you that the first point of the dilemma when you're talking about the neurologically complex beings, being partially explained by the parts which composes its I'm essence. So the way told you, horn, I'm not. So you're complaining about the interruption, but you do the exact same thing. That's I'm not honest. Don't talk about horn two. You ask me a question and answer the question, dummy. So answering. you don't have to ask the question. Dude, you're not answering. Oh, the so I'm answering the question right now. You just keep on speaking like a retard. So the answer to your question is simply that it is inevitable for there to be a neurologically simple being in the first one because it is impossible, metaphysically speaking, for there to be only neurologically complex beings existing because they don't have enough cause and power to sustain their own existence. Right? This is why I said to you that the only question, the only valid question you can ask in this case is what is going to be the argument for it is entailed under the first horn that there's a neurologically simple being because obviously under the second horn it is entailed that there's a neurologically simple being. Yeah, so I'm not asking about the first horn. You just didn't track what I'm asking for. I'm asking. You're so for, stupid. I know you're not asking about the first horn. You're asking about the third premise. Yes, but so that this hinges upon yes, so the answering? justification so for the first horn entails that you're logically simple. Why are you, answering? Why are you answering? So look, you have you have a dichotomy, okay? And then on each side of the dichotomy, you have a conditional. You're okay. so insistent. Now I'm asking you the argument for the conditional on the second horn of the dichotomy. Retard, it, retard, simple, retard. Sorry, sorry, You're maybe, asking me sorry, to justify sorry, the third sorry, premise. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The, the second simple, horn entails that it exists in all metaphysically possible worlds. You have to, if you so grant the first premise, as you just already granted the conclusion, the first premise, you have to ask me to justify the correlation between the metaphysically possible worlds. It's simple that it would exist in all metaphysically possible worlds. All right, here. So P1, what's P1 of the supporting argument for premise three? The supporting argument for premise three is going to be justified in virtue of whether the first one entails a neurological simple being. Fuck P hard. P one. Just, just, just tell me back word for word. P one. P one of the supporting argument. You already repeated P one several times, dude. You already granted P one. <laughs> what is P one of the supporting argument for P three? Just tell. Just tell. It what is P one of the supporting argument for P three? Do you mean like what is the supporting argument for the first one in the dilemma or the dichotomy? Look, since, since I tried asking you to justify P3, and you're no, the just, question you're just, you asked is just rambling, and you're not the answering. Question, now I just want you asking. to put it formally so that I can show you that not. I'm going to put the argument formally. So it's up to three. you to so, question so, one of the so, premises. So, and I'm already, so I'm already do you understand what a supporting Apollo. argument is, Apollo? Pardon? Do you understand what a supporting argument is? Yeah, I understand what the supporting argument is, obviously, but do you understand the commitments that I'm making for you to actually legitimize my position successfully? Do you, do you have a support? Because you don't even understand the burden that I have. Oh, I'm not, I, I'm not even the skeptic here, and I have to school you what the burden that Damn. I have. I, you don't even know the burden oh, I have man. currently. The burden I have to demonstrate to you is how the first thorn entails a neurological simple being, you fucking idiots. Yeah, so you asking me to justify one. the third premise goes back to the first premise right. and the point of the first premise, you dummy. Yeah, I don't think you understand how arguments work, so... I don't think you understand how argumentation works in this conversation. Look, I see the form of the argument, I see the premises, I see the conclusion. I'm asking you for premises. You see three, everything, but you, you understand the nothing. Of the yeah, you see everything, one. but you understand nothing. I got you, dude. So I'm going to have to explain to you from scratch Apollo, the commitments that I have Apollo, for you to actually get a basic Apollo, grasp on the commitments Apollo, that I have in this conversation home? so that you can actually have some proper objections. Okay, yeah. so do you want me to justify? Do you want me to Sorry. justify okay. why this is the case? Let me know why when this the ramble is done. Yeah, it is necessarily true that the first one entails a neurological simple being. 
Uh, is the so sorry? Is the ramble done? Yes, yeah, stop stuttering, dude. You're just confused right now. Uh, uh, I, uh, yeah, let confused. me know when the ramble's done. Could, I just put in a headlock, dude. This crazy. Is, is the ramble? So, so do you know the burden the I have early? I'm just waiting for this guy to stop skits around and actually give an actual proper objection. So, wait, are finish. you finished with the ramble? Yes uh, are no? you finished the rambling? And you think you're going to discourse of running no, twice by asking this question? Yet. That's crazy. Wait, wait, hold on. Or do you think do you think you're gonna score some running points by asking or you're finished with the rumble? Well no, I like I'm you already said that, this like, is not gonna up your steps. I'm, I'm hoping right. that I can get you to shut up for like ten seconds. I'm hoping I'm speak. hoping that I'm you hoping. can actually track my argument to the next attempt you have so that maybe you can present like a proper skeptical objection this Yeah, sorry, I, I track the argument just fine. I can you didn't explain track the argument. Sorry, I, just I can explain, explain which I can have sorry. Right? Can you shut the You don't even know the problem to burden the form of the argument. I can explain the inf the inferences being made. I can explain what the premise is saying. What I'm asking you for is whether or not <laughs> you have a supporting argument. I'm unsure in all of those claims, dude. And you're just freaking yes, out. Yes, the just, argument like, for crying. premise three. I'm gonna repeat premise three for you, and then I'm gonna explain it to you. I'm gonna dumb it down for you. Yeah, just give me premise one. Give me premise one of the supporting the argument. Give me the first warrant and what it is entailed for the first warrant that there has to be a real logical symbol. So we're gonna we're gonna go step by step, okay, Sunny? So let's let's repeat the the third premise real quick. Hold on. Yeah. So the third premise states that if simple, then it would exist in all metaphysically possible worlds. Do you track this? Yeah. So what's the okay? So given that? the first premise, Sunny student, I'm trying to teach you. Yep. Relax, champ. So given the first premise. And how the metaphysically possible world is just going to be distributed amongst or between all of these two horns, right? Then so long as it has been established that under the second horn there has to be a mirrorological symbol being that's just going to be analytically true. So then P, sorry, what sorry, needs sorry, to be established sorry, there sorry, for the argument to be successful is key one that there's a mirrorological There would be a mirrorological symbol. Under sorry, all the possible sorry, you're, not, you're rambling again. Oh. Sorry, you're rambling again. I need you to stop the. Sorry, rambling. you're not tracking again. No, sorry, not tracking. I'm asking you for P1. Sorry, not tracking. I'm asking you for P1. I'm asking you for P1 of the supporting trying, trying, argument. Trying, so premise trying, three. And then just explain to you how. Then it would just explain to you how one of them. I can't even. I can't even hear you. So premise one is that if simple, then it would exist in all metaphysically possible worlds. So what I'm looking for is some supporting argument that has some premises and a conclusion where the conclusion of that supporting argument is the conditional if simple then it would exist in all metaphysically possible worlds so do you have a supporting argument for premise three and if you do have a supporting argument for premise three can you tell me what premise one of that supporting argument is without rambling okay have you unmuted double share is whether the first horn in all metaphysically possible worlds entails there being the metaphysically yeah so just tell me word for word what premise one is go <laughs> so do i have to repeat this four more times for the track premise one dude because i've already done this already Word for word, what's word premise one of the supporting Okay, look, look, I, I got you, I got you. Sometimes you got to be charitable. Wait, where did, where did I where did go? Just write it in chat, write it in chat. The first premise states, I thought you wanted me to repeat it. I thought you wanted me to repeat it. Shut up real quick. So the Does first anyone premise, else hear him? Is it? I don't the know, first premise, so the first premise moron states, since you cannot read properly, for any object X, not the okay. first premise any of that object, argument, retard, 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 I'm asking you, retard, okay, you're muted again, you're muted again. So the first premise I'm asking for is not the first premise of the argument in question, it's the first premise of the supporting argument for premise three. I asked you if you know what a supporting argument is, clearly you don't. So a supporting argument is just an argument whose conclusion is one of the premises of the original argument that you're trying to defend. So I'll ask you again, do you have a supporting argument for premise three? And if you do, what is premise one of that argument? You're so scared to speak. I mean, to speak right now. That's actually crazy. So I'm going to restate the first premise as you request, and you look like you autist. So the first premise states, since you think slowly, I'm going to have to read slowly for you. For any object X, it is mirrorlogically complex or mirrorlogically simple. You're a retard. Are you tracking, retard? You're, you're Do you track this? What? One more no, time, one you, more you time. For any object X, argument. it is mirrorlogically complex or mirrorlogically simple. Track this. Okay, cool. So, if the second horn entails a mirrorlogically simple being existing, obviously that's going to be analytically true in every metaphysically possible worlds related to the second horn. And you're questioning whether the mirrorlogically simple being exists in all possible worlds. Then what you'd have to be questioning here is whether the first horn entails there being a mirrorlogically simple being. You fucking idiots. Are you right? saying the first Which brings me the back to what I told same? you. 
So sorry. when I told you, sorry. when I told are you, you saying, I want you not to be okay, asking me to yeah. justify. So are you saying that the first premise of the supporting argument is the same as the first pre pre premise of the original argument? Is that what you're saying? Stop stuttering, dude. Stop stuttering. Kid, that's a yes or no. Keep up, chat. That's a yes or no. Keep up, chat. That's a yes or no. You're confused, dude. You're, you're nervous the, right now. So, okay, I'll you're ask nervous you right now. Yeah. So, since this guy doesn't want to engage, just ask the question again. So, is the first premise of the supporting argument the same as the first premise of the original argument? Go ahead. I was going to present for to support the premise three, but too bad that to explain to you the burden I had before is, you. Is that a yes press. or no? Just bring the side Sorry, I didn't away. hear a yes or so no. The, there. So again, yeah, so again, the yes probably no burden there. I have, probably burden I have, the burden of. I sorry, Apollo. I have you muted again. I just want a yes or no to this question. Is the first premise of the supporting argument the same as the first premise of the original argument? Definitely not me. So who cares about that? So, so was that a yes or the no? argument for the the argument for the third premise is just going to be the case that it is impossible for there to be a mirologically complex being without any mirologically simple being inevitably to or any mirologically simple being to ground it inevitably. And to break down the arguments even further into like premises and conclusion. It's just going to be the case that either there's a finite regress of mirological complex being, or there's an infinite regress. Like, if there's a finite regress, then that means it's a first cause, and if there's a first cause, then that's going to contradict it being mirological complex because the first cause entails it being uncaused, but obviously it's caused by the parts. So the first one, the first, it being the, it being the finite regress of mirological complex being entails a contradiction. So then what this is going to boil down to is the metaphysical contradiction which is entailed from there being an infinite regress of mirological complex beings. I don't even know if this guy's still listening or still got me muted. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I hear you, but what, I, what I'm not... So is premise one that it's impossible for there to be, be a mirological complex being which doesn't depend on a mirologically simply being? Is that the premise one of your supporting argument? Yes, sufficiently, yeah. Okay, and then premise two of the supporting argument. Premise two of the supporting argument yeah. is just going to be the case... <coughs> The supporting argument for pre the second premise is just going to be the case that considering that it is metaphysically impossible um, for there to be a mirological complex being existing without there being a mirological simple being, then it would follow from the first premise that there has to be a mirological simple being under the first form. They would just make the extrapolation from there. Okay, so, okay. <clears throat> like, it's I a pretty simple I'm, argument. Wait, really. Hold on. So, I think I'm... Let me give me a second to write this down. I think I'm clear on what you're trying to do. It's it's a pretty ridiculous argument, but I think I'm clear on what you're trying to do now. Um, so let me write it down so I can post it in chat, and we can everybody here can can see it. So yeah, give me one second. For any x x is either very logic, be simple. Or complex p2 sim okay um it's possibly a complex being depend on the simple being to be um <coughs> p2 <coughs> since it's meant for the to be a <coughs> metaphysically complex being then it is metaphysically necessary simple mean. Um, okay, so here's the here's the, what I have. So uh, for any for any x that x is either mirologically simple or mirological mirologically complex, it's impossible for there to be a mirologically complex being which doesn't depend on a simple being, since it's metaphysically impossible for there to be a metaphysically complex being, then it is metaphysically necessary for there to be a simple being. Conclusion: If a being is mirological, mirologically simple, then it would exist in all metaphysically possible worlds. Is that is that a fair? Is that your argument? I was just responding to some other retard in the chat. Yeah, that's a fair interpretation of the argument if I heard correctly, right? I, I put it in the and obviously that's going to be that's going to hinge on whether the second horn entails there being a mirological simple being, which we both agree with. It's in chat here if you want to take a look at it. Oh, you mean in the VC chat? Let me check. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, I see it. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's good. It's okay. Cool. Okay. So yeah, the problem here is that um, even if P2 is true, so it's, uh, it's impossible for there to be a mere logically complex beam that doesn't depend on a simple beam. Even if we grant P2, it's not the same as saying that a metaphysically complex beam is like impossible or something. How no, we're not saying a metaphysically complex beam is impossible. Sorry? Just... To be clear, did you just say it does not mean that a metaphysically complex being is impossible? Because if that is exactly. what you're saying, then it was not making the deformation. Yeah, all, it, all you're saying is that the complex being depends on other uh, complex beings and simple beings that it's composed of. Not that a complex being is impossible. I never said the complex being is impossible. That's not the point I'm making. In fact, I believe that all the necessitarian about metaphysics, right? So I'm going to say that so both the I'm going to say that the complex being. Hold on, hold on, hold on, real quickly, because I just jib jabber do. I'm going to say both the complex beings and the simple being are necessary on their metaphysical model scope. I'm not going to say that they're impossible. What are you talking about? Sorry, then P3 is false by your lights of the supporting argument. No, it isn't, right? Because P3 is just me saying that if simple that it would exist in all possible worlds, how is me saying that a simple being exists necessarily contradicts metaphysical necessitarianism, dude? What are you talking about? Sorry, P3 says that because it's metaphysically impossible for there to be a complex being, then it is metaphysically necessary for there to no, be... For it to be, no, it is metaphysically impossible for there to be a complex being without a metaphysically simple being. Not that it is metaphysically impossible for there to be a complex being in itself. Okay, well then P3 is, then P3 is just, um, okay. So I thought you'd have known this, bro. So like, P3, I thought that... Yeah, P3 like, then is going to be, since it is metaphysically impossible for there to be a metaphysically complex being which doesn't depend on a simple being, then it is metaphysically necessary for there to be a simple being. But now P3, yeah. now now I'm just going to question P3 of the supporting argument for the same reasons that I questioned P3 of the original argument. Now, why why would I accept this? Why would you accept P3, P3 and P3 being that it is metaphysically necessary for there to be a simple being to ground complex being? Yeah, just because all, all complex beings like reduce down to simple beings, how is it following from this that... It's meant that uh, simple being exists in all possible worlds. Because if we, oh my god, you just conceded that you did not even realize. If you were to grant the idea that metaphysically complex beings or merely complex beings reduces down to a metaphysically simple being, and that's just going to be the first one, so it's going to be from the first one that there's a metaphysically simple being, and the second one just trivially states that there's a metaphysically simple being, and both horns reflects all the metaphysically possible worlds, right? It's just going to be, well, don't take, when I say metaphysically possible worlds, don't take this literally because I'm unnecessary and I just believe in one metaphysically possible world, but you get the gist of the point. The point I'm making here is, if you grant the first horn, and the second horn just trivially states there being a metaphysically simple being, then it's just going to be the case that under both horns, which reflects all the metaphysically possible worlds, there is a metaphysically simple being. Well, I don't know. I don't know why I would think that that's that uh, both those horns are covering all possible worlds because there there seems to be some assumption here that all worlds have positive ontological items populating them, and I'm not sure what reason there is to think that. Because I think I think the argument for why it reflects all metaphysically possible worlds is just, is just going to depend on like certain specific laws you granted in your epistemology or metaphysics respectively. Like if you're just going to be like someone who rejects like the it being a true dichotomy, then that's yes, it's going to be rejecting. the case that you're not going to grant it being something which reflects all metaphysically or logically possible worlds. But I just take it to be a true dichotomy no. given my conceptual schemes. No, it's true. Sorry, it's true that all beings are either complex or simple. But it's what I'm saying mm -hmm. is doesn't follow from that is that all possible worlds contain beings. That's that doesn't follow from that. Wait, hold on there a second. So it is true that a being is either simple or complex, and you said that if this is the conditional you agreed with, uh, at least for the argument's sake. I'm not saying you fully agree with this, but you're just like steel man at this point. You said that if there's a complex being or a set of complex beings, then the simple being exists. That would be a true implication or conditional right there. And if there's a simple being, then there's a simple being that's just going to be a tautology. So if you agree that it's either one of these two things, which represents the dilemma or the dichotomy itself, then how is it not going to be the case that it is accurately reflecting all the metaphysically or logically possible roles that we're currently analyzing here? Doesn't make any sense. Um, 
so yeah what what i'm saying is that um for this dichotomy in p one so for any x or x is something like all first of all what i'm understanding x to be here is something with positive ontological status so something um mm -hmm. and then anything that has that Wait, when you say positive ontological status could you clarify on this specific terminology the positive <clears throat> ontological status is just saying that it um it, it has it's opposed to something that, that exists only negatively, like the lack, something like the lack of people or the lack of um, the lack of thoughts or the lack of trees. Those are things with negative ontological status. Things with positive ontological status are things like trees, thoughts, people, etc. Um, oh, so you're saying the argument. OK, so I get what you're saying. So you're saying that the, the dichotomy or whatever argument you're presenting only applies to the set of all positive ontological statuses, but it doesn't apply or it doesn't cover for negative or beings or objects with negative ontological yeah, and, and I'm not sure that, it, that like, there could be some possible world where there's, only, there's mm -hmm. nothing with positive ontological status and then there wouldn't be a simple being there. Yeah, so, yeah, that, this is actually much better for you. So the response that makes it towards this is simply that I don't know what it means for there to be an entity which is completely negative in ontological status and for it to still remain or has some sort of like existential status, right? I take it that like entities with which possesses some trait which is reflective of some negative ontological status in itself has positive ontological status like give take into consideration like i don't have the thought of what it is like to be omniscient i cannot imagine this you could say that the lack of imagination regarding omniscience is something which represents a negative ontological status but inextricably the negative ontological status is in itself related to a being that exists and that being existed would be a positive ontological status. So it's not clear to me what it means for something to have complete negative ontological status for it to not be, like for something to be something which is negatively um, or completely neg negative in ontology and at the same time is not completely identical to the concept of nothingness, which I think is incompatible with the concept of reality, so to speak. Yeah, so what I'm saying is not that there's something with negative ontological status, but that there's just not a thing at all. Sorry, for that's that's what the critique is here. Yeah, the, the issue is simply that when you give the examples, and I understand the examples you're giving, you're talking about, um, you gave examples of things with negative ontological statuses, like for example, for example the lack of something. When I take it that in all of these examples, one can just make the argument that these lack of whatever substance or reference that's being talked about actually supervenes in something which exists, right? So if it is the case that in all worlds there's something which exists, which you'd obviously agree with, right? And these things which exist would possess some positive ontological status, which may have some attribute which is negative in ontology, then it's just going to be the case that these supposed examples or exemplifications that are given on the table actually reduces to some being which exists, which, under my view, is going to be identical to a being in positive ontological status. Yeah, so the, the possible world that I'm drawing out here, like this isn't really addressing it, the possible world I'm drawing out here is something where we can, we can represent this possible world with like a for each statement or existential quantifier where X is existing. Okay. It's just for each X, um, it's not the case that X. This is the, that's what I'm putting forward here. <coughs> Yeah, so, so wait, sorry, repeat the last part. I wasn't even listening to what you're saying. I'm going to write it up too, but mm -hmm. it's going to be um, for each x, it's not the case that x or x isn't existent. Mm -hmm. So for each x, it is not the case that x because x isn't existent. Where, well, I'm just telling you x is quantifying over existence. Okay, so when you say x is quantified over existence, the objection they're trying to make is simply that it is unknown whether, like, are you trying to make the objection towards the presumption that they're making that there has to be a being, there, are, there has to be a being in every single logically possible world which possesses positive ontological status? Yeah. And uh, just to be clear, I'm not saying that you're committed to the possibility of such. I'm not going to put the burden on you in this case. I'm just going to say that you're being skeptical for it is possible or impossible. So just to present the hypothesis real quickly, right? Um, just present to me a proposition which you're not sure is metaphysically possible related to what we're talking about currently with a negative ontological status. Um, that the, the possible world represented by for each X, it's not the case that X is metaphysically possible world. I like to speak in like a more particular sense or in a more specific sense, like give like a specific example, you know, yeah.
Uh, did you get the example or no? No, no, no. You gave the format of what you're trying to say, but I want the example to be more clear on what you're saying. Oh, well, I don't know what you mean by the example. Like, that is the example. It's kind of like, for example, if I say, if I say, um, um, X is possible, and but then someone asks, like, what's an example of an X, for example, and I say, well, a unicorn is possible, like something like that. Yeah, I'm just saying, so, um, for, for each X, it's not the case that X or X is existence. A unicorn is going to be an example of an X. So it's, in this world, it's not the case that unicorn. Now, Apollo, in this world, Apollo is another X. It's not the case that Apollo in this world. Now, like, go on for every single existent. It's just not the case that that. Yeah, I'm just going to write this down real quick. <clears throat> Let's see. Mm -hmm. I think I can take a much easier approach towards this, but I don't want to feel as if I'm dodging their specific objection. Um, let's see, so for any X... Uh... Wait, just to be clear, you agree that nothingness is just incoherence as a concept, right? Um, if you're saying that there's like such thing as nothingness that has like positive ontological status, I think that's incoherent. Yeah. Um, do you think that the concept of possible roles or possibility, so to speak, is representative of something with positive ontological status necessarily? No. Okay, that's the disagreement. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> I get it now. So, you're going to say that possibilities are reflective of state of affairs, but the state of affairs that like the possibilities are reflective the, of does not have like to be possible of, of Maybe like the total set of propositions describing a world is what I understand as a possible world. That's why I gave an example where I'm giving a set of propositions in form of the existential quantifier that describe a world. But do the propositions that are being talked about, like any proposition which you take to be something which is reflective of some negative or some state of affairs with some negative ontological status, are these propositions inclusive of anything with a positive ontological status? Um, well, for this one... You present to me a proposition with, which is reflective of a state of affairs which is negative in ontological status, which does not have any reference within the proposition which has a positive ontological status. Could you do that? Sorry, there's, um, I'm, I'm unclear on the question. Maybe you could rephrase. Oh, it's my bad. I was talking to someone. Repeat that, please. I said I was, I'm unclear on your question. Can you rephrase? Remember the first objection I made towards your, the argument as to why it is unclear whether it is metaphysically impossible uh, about the specific point you're on is based on the idea that based off my conceptual analysis of negative ontological status, it seems to have an inextricable relationship with some object X with a positive ontological status. And you're saying that it is possible, on your view, for there to be a possibility which is solely reflective of some state of affairs with a negative ontological status. Which brings me towards the question that I was asking you a couple seconds ago, which is simply, could you present to me a proposition that you take to be possible, which is reflective of a state of affairs with negative ontological status, which is not related to anything with a positive ontological status? To, to falsify the claim that these things are inextricably linked and related. Well, wait, what, it's clear, what, it's unclear what you mean by inextric inextricably linked here, because it can yeah. be true that everything, because um, like, like every proposition that's describing a negative ontological status is opposed to a proposition that's um, describing something with positive ontological status i can grant that but that doesn't get you to that there's a world where there actually exist things with positive ontological statuses you say it doesn't get me to the idea that there actually exists a world with what that, that they're like just saying that um this, mm -hmm. so if I, yeah i'm giving you this world where it's, it's describable solely in terms of propositions about things with negative ontological statuses like there's not chairs in this world there's not unicorns in this world there's not apollos in this world i can grant to you that um a negative ontological status is like inextricably linked yep. with something with positive ontological status like a unicorn mm -hmm. is something that if it existed it would have positive ontological status apollo is something yeah. that if it existed would have positive ontological status i can okay i get what you're saying but it doesn't get you mm -hmm. to that there actually exists any of these things in this world. Yeah, I get what you're saying. So basically what you're saying here is simply that, um, like, if we go back to the proposition that you said a while ago, like, there exists no chairs, like, in that specific proposition, there's not any specific reference in that proposition that one could pick out and say, well, hey, this has a positive ontological status. However, 
I just take it that based of my conceptual analysis of reality, it is going to be inextricably linked to a positive ontological sense. I want to make a disclaimer, by the way. I'm not just making a disclaimer without any basis. We can actually go down the reasons to why I believe that it is inconceivable and impossible for there to be a reality without anything with a positive ontological sense. And as long as you agree that it is necessary that any reality that wants to exist or that could possibly exist would have at least one object X, with the positive ontological status, and this is going to bring, back, bring us back to the first premise, which you've already agreed to be a true dichotomy. Um, I said it's a true dichotomy, like for what it's quantifying over. Yeah. And what you, the thing that you think it is quantifying over is Existence. things which po positive ontological status, just to be. Yeah. And you also said that you. So you're saying that it is possible for this to be a reality from a holistic point of view without any object with a positive ontological status. Sure. I don't see like how... Really okay. So, just to be clear, that just, I think that statement, to, just that statement you're making or that statement you're committing yourself to, under my view, just going to be identical to, it is possible for there to be a complete lack of objects with positive ontological status, which still exists regardless. And that just... From my perspective, seem to be the same as saying that nothingness exists and it's impossible. It's not saying that nothingness exists, but rather that it's possible that there is nothing. There's there's like a distinction between those two statements. Yeah, I don't think it is possible that there is nothing. That doesn't make any sense. Well, like if we take nothing to be the lack of all things which exist, um, and then take existence to be inextricably linked to that which is real. Then, so long as there's something which is real, I'm just going to take it to be the denial of nothing. Therefore, in that specific world that you're trying to pick out right there, it is not actually the case that nothing exists. But due to some, like you could say, some conceptual ambivalence on your end, you are under the wrong assumption that it would actually be indicative of the possibility of nothingness exists. Well, under what I mean, sorry, under what I mean by, um, yeah. I know that Mason. I was I was gonna get there. I didn't have a chance to get there yet. But anyways, the um, the the whole validity thing, has the original argument a, appears not to be valid. I glanced over the the inferential structure a little bit ago, but anyways, I don't want to get off this point yet. The um, the it might be a difference in how we're construing possible worlds. You don't the think whole, the they don't think the original argument is valid? <laughs> yeah, I don't think the original argument is valid. Yeah, we can go over that afterwards. Uh, I don't know you. I, I think that's going to be like one of the worst objections you could make to the argument itself. But we can go over this afterwards. What's the point you going to make currently? Go yeah, forward. sure. We can. I'm happy to go over that afterwards. Um, yeah. So the um, the just yeah the re the reason why is just because like f is doesn't appear anywhere in the premises. Unless like ship pops up in the conclusion. But um, the the whole point here is that maybe there's a, just a difference in how we're using the term possible worlds because. Seems like the way you're using possible worlds is just like the total ways that things could exist and, and existence is baked in there. But the way I'm using possible worlds, it's like the total set of ways that could be that, um, like the total set of ways that you the, could, that the world could describe have been. propositionally about the same. Oh, world. yeah. So I see what's going on. So, like, I'm basically taking possible worlds under my conceptual analysis to be something which is inextricably linked. So anything with some existential status, and you're just taking possible worlds to be something which is inextricably linked to something propositional, which doesn't have to have something with a positive ontological status. Yeah, I think there's just a difference in how we're using possible worlds here. I mean, that's just going to be like a trivial conceptual dispute, but I still think we can reconcile this. Um, I'm not going to just end it off as like a trivial dispute. I'm still going to go on and but continue on with this point. If, if all you mean is just like in all the worlds where things do exist, um, under my notion, that in all those worlds where things do exist, there's like simple things, then I might be inclined to like agree with that. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, that's what I'm saying, really. That's literally the argument. But I'm willing to actually, I'm not going to just like end it off with just, okay, I'm just going to go on to like my specific conceptual analysis, which I think is more plausible, by the way. I'm going to actually, because I'm curious about your analysis of possible world. I'm going to go under your analysis. I'm going to step into your territory. I'm going to understand if it is actually intelligible, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you think that possibilities, it is possible, I don't want to mischaracterize a position really, you think it is possible for there to be like some world X where there's nothing that exists. Yeah. So you do not think that existence, you do not think possible worlds commits one to the belief that there's something that exists. So, okay, cool.
Well, so let's see. Just it's clear. to be clear, like all I mean by possible worlds mm -hmm. is like a set of coherent propositions describing reality, and then I'm gonna say that one coherent way of describing reality. What is real? Is that for every existential proposition, which is just a proposition of the form X exists, that proposition is negated. Yeah, that's the issue. So, like, I think this is going to like um, be broken down to like our the semantical, uh, you could say, scrutiny that we apply towards the definition, the, the, the definition of reality. Like, uh, what what do you mean by reality in this case? Like, what does reality mean on your semantical account? You're asking me what reality means. Yes. Um, reality is just going to be like the total set of propositions describing the world, the actual world. The actual world. Wait a second. So if reality is just okay. So you said a while ago that it is possible for under your view of possible worlds, it's just going to be reflective of a proposition or set of propositions which describes reality. But obviously that's not going to be true because you can have possible worlds which are not actually nature. You agree with this, right? Yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. So if you can have possible worlds which are not actual, and your account of possibilities reduces down to the description of all the actual worlds given your kind of reality, and that's just going to be inconsistent. Oh, sorry, no, my, my notion of possible worlds doesn't reduce, like, all to the actual world. I'm saying that the total, there's a, so possible worlds is just a total set of, uh, a coherent set of, logically coherent set of propositions describing the way the world could be. There's a different, mm -hmm. like, set of propositions describing the way the world actually is. But when you're talking about could, that's just a modal verb which is denotes impossibility, which is what you're yeah. defining here. So I'm just going to be unclear what could means. So you're going to have to redefine that part again. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I'm just telling you it's like a coherent, uh, it's going to be like some coherent set of propositions, some logically coherent set of propositions. Okay, so logically coherent set of propositions. So I'm just going to take this to be any proposition which is um, compatible with the laws of logic. Uh, it does not entail like, some contradiction if it was yeah. be denied. Okay, so the propositions would be it would be describing the way the world could have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, what do you mean by possibility? Is just that which is possible is that which describes the way the world could have been. It's just the same as saying that which is possible is that which describes the way the world possibly is. That's not what I which... said, though. What I said is that possibly is a coherent set of propositions that are a logically coherent set of propositions describing the world. So you're just saying, so wait a second, so you believe that the propositions which under your view is logically possible, what do you think it is describing? Well... Some well, other world? Yeah, trivially a possible world. And you think a possible world is going to be something like, like, I don't, I'm, I'm clear at this, like, when you're saying it is trivially describing a possible world, like, it just appears to be the case that there's some like ambivalence or there's some confusion here whereas each time you attempt to define possible worlds or possibility you either use a modal verb or you use the word actual world or reality which just goes back to this sense of you could say abstruse entailment given your semantical account of these different endems that we laid on the table well i'm not i mean i think you're confused i'm not defining it circularly i'm just telling you a possible world is a coherent a logically coherent set of propositions that's describing um, it's just, so it's, you think the proposition nothingness exists is possible, logically speaking? Well, the, the prop so a world described by the set of all existential propositions being negated. Okay, so you're saying that world is possible, which is basically the same as nothingness, because nothingness is going to be reflective of the negation of all things that existential quantifiers exist in. Yeah, but yes, cool. there's a difference between saying like nothingness exists as an existential proposition and just saying all existential propositions. Are existential right. propositions, yes, yes. Um, so it's just, well, under my view, it's, there's not going to be an actual difference. Um, if you're going to take nothing, like, they, they're like, I think they're like um, several different accounts of nothingness under SCP. They, they're like over 10 different accounts of nothingness, right? So under my account of nothingness, we're just taking nothingness to be the lack of all things. Um, under that account, it's going to be identical to what you're saying, which is the lack of or the negation of anything with some existential quantifiers or whatever, why not? Right. So under my view, it's just going to be trivially the same. Like they're going to be the identical. But, um, I mean, it's un yeah. I don't know how long. What is unclear to me though is the know, negation for all things with existential we, quantifiers exist. I don't know how yeah. long we want to stay on like the comparing views of of modality point because there's like yeah. two or three other issues that I have with this. Um, okay, let's go on to the other issues then because I don't believe that like. Um, 
and this is just obviously my belief, but I think this probably um, backed up by what's been happening in the space. Like you're not able to give like an intelligible account of nothingness existing, even under your own model um, system or model analysis. But we can go on to the other criticism that you I have mean, laid out. Why is the argument that I have a chat? I don't, yeah, yeah. I mean, I th think it's perfectly coherent under my view, but I'm, I'm willing to set that to the side. The, the, the second issue here is going to be that even if it's true that some variological simple exists in every possible world, either because every possible, assuming granting every possible world either has something complex or simple in it, and everything complex reduces to something simple, what follows from that is that every world um, has that every world has something which is mirologically simple. What doesn't follow from that is that any given mirologically simple thing exists in all possible worlds. That would be some like modal operator shift. You're saying that it wouldn't follow from this that any given mirologically simple being would exist in all possible worlds. Yeah. And, and just to be clear, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so it, from, for each mirological simple, it, it doesn't follow that um, every, it's, for every, it's uh, necessary that every. Let's say that it is possible that a mirological symbol being in one world is has a different identity from a mirological symbol being in another, in another world. Um, no. So, what I'm saying is that um, it doesn't follow from it's necessary that there exists some mirological symbol. That there exists. It doesn't follow from that that there exists some mirological symbol which is necessary because that shifts the necessity operator from before the existential quantifier to after, which is fallacious. Yeah, so that's not even sure, right? Because you're just saying right here that the model shift is going to be based on the fact, which is that um, it wouldn't follow from like it being the case that it is necessary given the set of affairs, that there's a mirological of a being, that it will be the case that the mirological of a being would necessarily exist. Well, that would be true maybe under your idea or your analysis of modality that we've been talking about previously. But if you were to be agreeing that all the metaphysically possible worlds should be analyzed there would entail um, there being a mirrorological system being given my model analysis, that would actually be the case that it follows that it is necessary. Yeah, Unless so you have to be positive in some world. Uh, right. you, 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 either have, you either have to be, wait, just to be clear, just to be clear, you either have to be positive in some world where nothingness exists, which is metaphysically possible, or you have to be positive in some world where there's a metaphysically complex being that exists, which is not actually a being which um, requires some yeah. metaphysically simple being in this world for it to exist. But since you're not even making any of these two current propositions, and you're limiting the metaphys all the set of metaphysically possible worlds that are the, the, the domain, sorry, of metaphysical possibilities, so these two things are being established, then it would definitely follow given the conversational circumstance. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the point, just to be clear, the point I'm making doesn't depend on my analysis of possibility. I'm granting your analysis of possibility. This is a point not about the content of the argument, but about the form of the argument. So. This is going to be independent of anybody's analysis of what uh, possibility means. This is just a point about the form. So under like any modal logic system, this type of operator shift is going to render an argument invalid. And the operator shift in question is that from P3, so let's look at P3, since it's metaphysically impossible for there to be a metaphysically complex being, which doesn't depend on a simple being, then it's metaphysically necessary for there to be a simple being. So from it, from the fact that it's, if we even... Oh, I think it, you're saying it requires another premise. No, well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that from the consequent of P3 here, it's metaphysically necessary for there to be a simple being. That's not equivalent to what's being said in the conclusion that if a being is mirological simple, then it would exist in all metaphysically possible worlds. And the reason those two aren't equivalent is because the necessity operator is placed in a different plate, or is, is placed... Wait, that was even my version of the argument, I'm pretty sure. I'm, that's in Mason's um, copy and paste. No, I'm looking in VC. Or your version. The one, the one I transcribed from you in, in VC. Yeah, it could be the case. So I, I, I think you should just focus on the argument that I present, right? Well, you can in, even in your arguments when you're talking about the third premise, I had to correct you on the content, content of the third premise. So, yeah, just focus on the argument that I present. Yeah, but this I'm not looking be, at your guys. No, no matter how you write out the argument, this is going to be an issue because it's an issue with the reasoning itself. So the reasoning itself is that because in every possible world you either have, um, there's either, or for each being in every possible world, there's, a, there's either some simple being or there's some complex being that reduces to some simple being. What that, get, what that reasoning gets you to is just that necessarily there's something simple. Necessarily there's a simple being. Do you disagree that that's what that reasoning gets you to? But that's the point that I'm making currently, so what's the contention? Yeah, so then the contention is that that's not getting you to, if a being is mirological simple, then it exists necessarily. That's the contention. Wait a second, so you're saying that 
it is not the case that if I'm reading this mere logical simple, that it is necessary. It doesn't get into this conclusion in virtue of the analysis that we make of the metaphysically possible worlds in the latter or in the prior part of the conversation. With this Here, I'll, I'll like write out the fallacy and modal logic in the chat. It's fine. Just give me a minute. Okay. I can explain it if you want to. It's fine. I'll, I'll just write it out. Um, yeah. And after this is, um, after you finish, but uh, we need to actually talk about um, the form of this argument. I'm not even sure what's going on here. Um, but yeah. Um, here, I'll just give me a second to, to get through this. Um, yeah, Sully, I'm defending the argument, probably, yeah. So, okay. Also, Sully, it was Arianus who told me that you're trying to defend the idea that necessitarianism is compatible with free will. That's why I DM'd you about it. <laughs> Wait, oh, you're talking about Mason? Or... Oh, that's funny. Yeah, Arianus told me that. Okay, so here... Um... Okay, here, so then... I do not have all these fucking necessity keys and and shit saved. Okay. So what I'm saying here is is essentially that what the reasoning gets you to is what's on the left hand side here. Necessarily there exists a simple thing. The reasoning that you're giving. And what the premise literally what is I for, that's literally what I said. I told you when I first tried to interpret your objection, I said to you, are you trying to make the claim? That it is not the case that every single world where there's a mirological system of being, the same mirological system of being exists, or rather, um, the, they remain the same or have the same identity in every single possible world. And you said, no, that was not what you're saying. But in the chat, you typed up the exact same interpretation that I had towards your argument. Well, maybe I misheard you, but it's an issue with yeah, it's an issue with the form here. Um, yeah, this is going to be easy to rebut, actually. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm just going to take identity, like. It's just going to be possible for there to be like a mere logical symbol being, or there being like possibly, uh, like possibly, uh, let's say like we, we have like a mere logical symbol being in concepts, right? Like I just think it'd be impossible for there to be two different types of mere logical symbol beings or two hypothetically possible mere logical symbol beings which are non-identical, given the fact that if you're going to say that they are non-identical and there's going to be some differentiating property, which makes it the case that one is not identical to the other specific mere logical symbol being which is being talked about, and that's going to entail some sense of multiplicity, and as a result, it's going to contradict to be mere logical simple in nature. Yeah, that's going to, so that's wait, not going to wait, fix wait, the, wait, 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 hold on. That's not going to fix you, the form you, here, you, first of all. Like, that's going to require, you, you might have some some separate auxiliary argument for why something simple, there can only be one simple thing. And then maybe you add yes. some extra premises in this argument that, um, if there, that is exactly what I said. I told you that if you're just going to make this objection, then I just take it that you're just going to be asking for, extra, for some yeah. extra premises, and which maybe you'll agree with. And, but, I mean, the form of the argument as is is just invalid in virtue of, in virtue of this modal operator shift. And then um, even if you add in these premises... Now, what are you describing is on the modal operator shift here? I mean, it is, but okay. The, um, there's still going to be issues like... I'm still going to have objections to that argument if we add those premises in. I'm not sure how we're justifying the identity of indiscernibles. I'm not like convinced of that, but wait. When you're saying like asking to justify wait. the identity of indiscernibles, like are just being skeptical of my conceptual analysis of identity or something? No. So something else. <laughs> well, okay. asking someone for like to justify their conceptual analysis of identity or like any specific um, you could say. Um, different that they're talking about is just going to be trivial to me. The point so is, though, like, wait, any, any... Uh, are you saying that, yeah. like, are you saying there's exactly one simple and only, yes. only like, one? Yes, like, just take a mere logical simple being to possess, like, um, like, I can just, like, list out the attributes that is entailed from its metaphysical profile, and I just take it that in all worlds, it would, if it is mere logical simple, that it has all of these things, which are within this metaphysical profile, and as a result, is going to remain the same thing in all possible worlds. Yeah, but then okay, but then there's a question about how you're how you're arriving at there actually being complexes in any of these worlds. Oh yeah, we talked about this already, by the way. But um, because because I can grant I can grant that it's a logically possible world where there's absolutely no complex being, but at the same time, given the fact that he just steel manned the first premise, which operates under the dichotomy, whereas there's either 
instead of only complex beans or there's only simple bean or whatever, um, there's just going to be the case that following that agreement or those set of agreements that were prior established in the discussion we're having, then questioning the possibility or the necessity of there being complex beans is going to be redundant. Any, um, any yeah, reason, no. we could no. we could go off so like we would. It's invalid as is. We could add premises in and make it valid, maybe, and then we could object to those premises. But I think we we can go back and just talk about the form of the actual argument now. Like it's just clearly like it. not valid. Yeah, like what the conclusion literally just appears from now. It does, and it's just obviously. So when I say it's not valid, all you're just saying is that if you grant all the premises, it doesn't follow that the conclusion is true. Yeah. Like, what's going to be the argument for that? Because the the conclusion is it's not the case that there exists in necessarily F. Um, and F doesn't appear anywhere in the premises, and the premises aren't inconsistent. Wait, pardon, repeat that? Yeah, F just represents brute contingency. Okay. Yeah, but, but F isn't in the premises. You notice that? Yeah. You, you, so the argument, of course... So you're saying that the content that, of the conclusion has to be in the premises for the argument to be valid? What's the argument for that? Uh, no, unless the premises are inconsistent, because if it's like an expulsion well, the argument... Argue, the, the argument for that is that deduction is non-ambulative, so it's like yeah. a, by definition of deduction. Unless I introduce like, you know, P, not P, therefore Q, which, you know, isn't the case for your argument, then of course, like, like trivially, you know, that F will have to appear in the premises somewhere. And given that it doesn't, we can just easily tell that the argument's not valid. So, so we, just to respond to Soli real quick, when you say that deduction is not non ampliative or it is non ampliative like what does that mean in this context? It means that the content is found uh, the content that's found in the conclusion is also found in the premises. Oh yeah, in, oh yes, yeah, I just remember now. Like ampliative reasoning is just going to be inductive or abductive reasoning, whereas the conclusion is not within the specific premises or whatever. Yeah. And deduction is the contrary. Yeah, but at the same time, though, I do not believe that just because, like, I think that the, the like whatever content which is which is within the conclusion of an argument, let's say in a deductive argument more specifically, like that conclusion can be heavily implied or in, within the premises without the F operator, the F, I should say, propositional variable being included within any of the premises. Wait, I don't know what you mean by like, heavily implied. Because if we look at like, all of the, the premises, like, we just the premises and we realize that brute contingency well, is entailed, <laughs> then we get to make an argument for that. It's just an invalid argument. If you're, if you're trying to, so look, like, you, could, look, you, could, you could take a modus ponens and just decide to assign names to the propositions differently, you know, such yeah. that like, okay, we're gonna call. Q, we're also gonna call Q R, right? So we're gonna say, if P then Q, P therefore R, right? But R just means Q, right? You could, you could, you could say something like this, right? But like, what you want to do, uh, you know, on the formal logic side, is give something that can be, uh, that you can give a natural deduction proof for, you know. And so you would have a line that says, uh, you know, Q equals R, you know, basically. If you wanted to do but that. I think I think how we determine I think how we determine this to be invalid and how we determine the content within the conclusion to be a part of the argument itself is just going based off well if the premises were to be false or unsound or whatever or whatnot, would it be the case that it is entailed from the premises being false or at least one of the premises being false that the conclusion is actually false, right? Or that the brute contingency thing is actually possible. And given the content of the premises and all of this that it would actually be entailed that it would be the case that the conclusion would be false, well, right? Do you, have, do, you have like a, do you have like a set of premises that like we couldn't just disagree with and or, or agree with and then disagree with the premises? Like, do you have a set of premises that they could disagree with? I don't think you're the question. Uh, uh, a set of premises that we could, that we wouldn't be able to uh -huh. disagree with and then disagree with the conclusion. Okay, yeah. I have a set of premises. I think all of the premises would be um, the set of premises that you could disagree with or couldn't disagree with without granting the conclusion, whatever. Look, it's very simple. If it's a valid argument, have a look. We'll do two things. Either, um, one, you tell us what the inference rule is on the conclusion, or two, you use um, some validity checker and put this inferences in and show us that it comes out as valid. So do I think the validity checker thinking. that we can utilize is just go based off the content of the argument that we've been reviewing for the entire time of this conversation. Right, so I'll give you the form of your argument. Let me just post the strict form in the chat. As a side note, 
and I'll talk to you about this at some point, Apollo, if you have mm-hmm. one and only one necessary simple entity that exists, um, mm-hmm. that does just start to look like my view, which is like existence monism and necessitarianism. Oh, um, really? I'm actually a necessarian too, because like, that's why I was like, I'm really curious about your argument regarding the compatibility between necessitarianism and free will, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not libertarian free will by any stretch, but like there are notions of free will that it's kind of compatible with, sure, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Well, just to be clear, yeah, so that's the strict form of the argument. Now, there's two things you can do here. One, you just tell us what the inference rule is on the conclusion. Or two, you put this in a validity checker and show us that it comes out as valid. Okay, so if you want to show that that inference is valid because it's a formal structure, you can do either of those two things. Which one do you want to do? I think I've already, like when you say validity checker, like what specifically are you talking about here? Because I yeah, think for that example, like my view of the generator, about I'm just talking about one. which we can use as like some metric to determine it to be valid. And I think I've already demonstrated some sufficient metric for our benchmark for establishing the argument itself being valid in format. What is the, in- wait, I, I, sorry, um, what is the inference rule in the conclusion? Inference rule? Yeah, what inference rule is being used on that conclusion? Wait, on the conclusion itself or within the argument? How, what is the inference rule that the conclusion is derived from? Yeah, I'll check the arguments and then give the inference real quick. Hold on. Okay. You can also check the argument using a validity checker and show us that it comes out as valid. So you can do either of those two things. Um, now, in the meantime, I'm not even clear. Like, Fallen God, I'm glad Fallen God is here. I'm glad Quantum Foam is here. I'm not sure what type of, like, semantics. Well, let's structure this argument. I'm unclear. Like, I'm unclear. Like, even like, like the amount of quantum predicate and logic. And so it doesn't look like full first order logic. Um, where did you get these semantic, like, where did you get this, like, sort of, uh, these variables and this representation from? Like, I use, like, some, like, uh, like, you're talking about, like, the variables, like, the modal logic variables or what? No, not the modal logic variables, like, this, the general kind of structure. Like, for example, premise one says, it you know, has, you know, the universal quantifier, but then it has, like, X and then a colon by condition to a disjunct of C or S. This is a very, like, this is does not look at all like any type of monadic expression or a full first order logic expression. What, what type of, like, is this a different type of logic? What is I this? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go too hard. I mean, I, I see an argument structure similar to this, um, that's being presented. Is that supposed to answer well, my wait, question? I, I'd like to hear Fallen God's view on the argument, personal. Wait, no, I'd, I'd like to hear an answer to my question. I give the answer to your question. No, what, okay, can you repeat back to me what my question was? You asked me what logic forms is this going on, or it's not clear if it's yeah, what going type on of system is this? first order logic. Yeah. What, what was the answer? The answer was simply that, the, the answer to the question was simply that I get, got, got the structure of this argument based off an argument I saw, uh, or an argument with a similar structure, which was actually first order. Okay, this is first order logic. Yeah. So you think like it's if a mix, I were it's a mix to of put like this... predicate logic, it's a mix of predicate logic and um and modal logic, obviously. Like, yeah, of course. Other. Yeah, that I mean that's fine. I don't have an issue with mixing predicate logic and um so to speak um modal logic. But that first premise does not look at all like any sort of predicate logic expression, right? If I like that first premise, how you'd write that in predicate logic, you'd say for all of x, c of x, or s of x. Or this just is a an extremely like I've just never seen this sort of expression before. Um, oh, yeah, you're right. Can you that part. give me? Yeah, can I you tell me the, any the logic textbook text, reference text. that has yeah, this yeah, type yeah, of I structure you, for I agree predicate with you in the sensor. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't agree that it is necessarily the case that you, you can express the first premise in that sense. I agree with you that generally speaking, um, any person who is writing this in the predicate logic form is going to say like for all of x, c of x, which is complex x. Or S of X, which is a simple X. I agree with this, but I don't okay. think this is the only way that you can express this in predicate logic. Can you but give you may me have just been, any you may, you may just not logic be used to that specific textbook um, or logic paper reference that classifies that first premise or a structure similar to it as a first order logic expression? Like a textbook, huh? I'd, you, it doesn't. It can be a paper or a textbook or a chapter of a textbook. 
anything that has a similar I couldn't give you like an accurate citation probably just says with the side the name but I know for a fact it's going to be inherent in like some book of red yeah, I was just saying that I, I know for a fact I cannot give you the specific name okay. um, of the citation that I'll be talking about. But oh, I there's no surprise at all the there. There's book. actually no surprise there. Wait, so you're saying that because I'm not able to give you the name of the book that I've seen this in, that means there's no such thing as this thing exists in any book whatsoever? Oh, I never said that. Okay, I might have misheard you that. Oh, you might have? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that seems to have been happening a lot. But, like, anyway, look, um, as long as, like, on baseline... <laughs> Like, we know that the argument, like, whatever, I mean, we know at least, like, the argument has a conclusion that doesn't appear anywhere. We know the premises aren't inconsistent. Um, the argument's invalid. We know that. I know um, Amdir also brought up other considerations relating no, to, like, you, you don't know the argument is invalid. Shift, You're still trying like to check that. if the argument is right, valid. So we know at you least even formally given, the wait, argument is invalid. You haven't even given any actual, yo, right, so you haven't given like, any first place baseline, or what we want to do is at least that. get a valid argument. Then we can start yeah, disambiguating all of the, like, the weird the only arguments you gave on the table, uh, unclear terms here. Um, because I think I take it like Amber. I don't know if you have this view. But but you are talking you, to this guy. Why are you speaking up? Like I just like felt, but okay, it's, it's like you're you fighting guy. against this vague cloud of nonsense, and he's not doing any work to clarify what he's saying. Um, like I, I just don't even think I understand what's being said in the premises at all. Yeah, sorry about that. All he does is just overspeak. Like, I even even when I was debating Amder guy, like, like he has like some social cues, like know when to speak and know when to not speak. This guy just keeps on speaking. So you didn't give an argument for the argument is actually invalid, by the way, or rather you attempted to give an argument. The argument you gave, um, specifically, sorry, was that um, the conclusion is not considered or it is not contained within the premises, right? And you also try to say that. Or rather, Amder gave an objection by saying, "Which of the premises or the collection of premises, which, if we were to not grant, would falsify the conclusion of gave the collection of premises and gave the explanation for such?" You never gave an argument for the argument is invalid. You just said the argument is invalid based off this specific um, belief that you had at the table, which avoided points out to be baseless. Right now, that was the reason as to why you tried to appeal to Falling God by calling Falling God into this conversation to confirm if the argument is valid. Or invalid, considering he has much more knowledge in this than you, right? So you never gave an argument for why this is invalid, by the way. And whatever, or rather, the argument you gave was not sufficient. And I'm going to unmute you because I'm just going to take it that you're not going to be interrupting me as much as you were doing a while ago. Why don't you read through this um, this first order logic? Like yeah, you're on me to know of the argument and tell me if this is if any of this is incorrect if you just substitute in for the variable names what I wrote there. You mean in the chat? I'm gonna check real quick. Yeah, in the yeah. Uh, chat, main chat. Oh yeah, by the way, to be clear, I did I just ignored after I, I heard it was rambling something about like validity, blah blah. I just ignored the rest of what it was saying. But to be clear, anybody like of course like this argument is using at least some type of classical logic and Anyone who knows anything about basic logic knows that um, the only way you'll be able to have a valid inference where you derive a conclusion that doesn't appear in the premises, there are two cases. One is, when we, one is when we infer a tautology from an empty set of premises without, further assum without any previous assumptions. All right, now, the second will just be when we have an argument that follows from explosion, when we just have inconsistent premises and we don't need anything because we can just derive the conclusion from a contradiction right now this you argument the conclusion does not appear neither the premises. you're going based cases. on the fact that the propositional so retard, variable right, has been included in the conclusion retard, is not within the premises even, isn't even smart enough to tell that the argument is just invalid of course you'll keep rambling and monologuing surprising absolutely nobody so, so it's just like logically possible it's just like logically possible for there to be like some argument x where it's like the propositional variable which does not appear within the conclusion um is actually going to be something which if the set of propositions within the argument is false then it is entailed that the conclusion is false and so long as that's logically possible oh, the near means of presenting the reason as to why it is the case that the argument is invalid based off lack of appearance someone told me um, within the premises of the argument right of f 
would be an invalid form of argument for the conclusion that my argument is invalid. Okay, so Oh, is he done? Cool. Yeah. So if he wants to express more misunderstanding of basic, I'm, I'm glad this is being recorded, by the way. If he wants to express greater misunderstanding of basic logic, he can continue to do that. If he wants to give us a valid argument, we can also get a just valid argument. Just making the claim that the argument is not valid, right? I've already falsified, falsified, we can also do falsified that. the justification. I'm just going to mute him again. I'd rather undermine I don't the want to listen to this guy ramble. The table, so why the argument is not argument. actually valid. Yeah, your reason for why the argument is not valid is because the variable that which, that which is within the conclusion does not appear within the set of premises within the argument. And that does not follow. Like it, it is possible for the variable to not appear within the conclusion or sorry, within the premises that have been established whilst at the same time the variable that's within the conclusion is not conceptually isolated from the um, variables or the concepts of the premises. And so like it's possible about that you are, She's not even, you not it's not even by addressing the way, what was said. Argument for why Maybe he doesn't even understand, understand what was said. Like, the funny thing is, like, I bet like my credence is very high. If we asked him just reproduce the point that was made, he wouldn't be able to. Do I can it. reproduce the point that you've been making. Every time you ask me to reproduce the point, I successfully reproduce the point. But every time you oh, by the way, Ender, did you sign off point, on this? Um, your you formalization. Yeah, yeah, the curious. point you've been making this far is based on the format of the argument and how the form of the argument is invalid. Based Wait, let on me the unmute him for a second. Hold on. Wait, Apollo, did you speaking, sign off on MDR's formulation? This is actually crazy. I'm going to actually just mute this guy real quick because he's got like no social cues, like no one to shut the fuck up. So, yeah, he's done speaking good. So, the main objection we've been making this far, right, is simply that the only times where the argument or any logically deductive argument or formal argument has a conclusion which suddenly appears out of nowhere within the argument is in cases like, for example, where you're arguing some explosion type argument. And you also mentioned the idea, which is that, well, given the argumentative structure and the fact, which is that the conclusion variable, does not, which is F, does not appear within the premises, then it's going to be the case that these things are going to be conceptually isolated. And as a result, the argument will be logically invalid. I've already explained to you, uh, this does not valid, um, this does not follow firstly. And I think when Amder gave a better objection by asking me the question, which is simply, which set of premises, which if for it to be granted, or if for it to not be granted with the conclusion being false, I identify those the premises. And I think me identifying such is already indicative of the idea that it does not have to explicitly appear within the premises for it to be a valid argument as you claim it to be. Yeah, so Apollo, like I posted a first order logic, ver logic version. Curious if anything I presented there is wrong. And then if it's not wrong, I pasted a truth table below, like proving that the argument's invalid. Okay, let me check. Mason, you pinged me for what? Good job. Clear. Be clear, um, Amder, which argument, which form of the argument do you think I'm going under? Or which form of the argument do you think um, is reflective I was within the argument I presented in chat with the two here, table? Here, I'll, I'll tag you in it again. I was, I'm asking... Wait, can I not tag you in my own comment? Oh, here we go. Um, um, mm -hmm. Okay. I'm asking if this is representative of the argument in first order logic. So either. Oh, either let me check. Yeah, I'm going to check this along. So this says one says either positive ontological item is simple or po or it's complex. Um, two is uh, if the some positive ontological item is complex, then necessarily it's not a brute given fact that it necessarily depends on certain existential parts for existential sustainability, like whatever the fuck that means. And then premise three says that if it's simple, uh, then it's necessary. And premise four is just stating again, that like either it's simple, either a positive ontological, ontological item is simple or it's necessary. And then the conclusion is that brute contingency is impossible. <laughs> I think you should tweak the impossible with false because in this specific predicate logic format of the argument, uh, it has not established in any of the prior premises 
um, any more the logic variables for us to have a clear understanding of the conclusion. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that, that doesn't change the form. Not that, you, not that you've changed false, then the argument. Yeah, I agree. This this is the good form of the argument. <laughs> wait, Apollo, wait, can you look in the side chat for this room? No. And just tell me if you think that that's what you're like, scroll up a couple. Wait, look, on Amdir's formulation, you can accept every premise and you can imagine the falsity of the conclusion where, um, you know, whatever being you're stipulating as necessary, but nonetheless not being brute because, you know, whatever um, essential parts it has, it depends on it. Um, you can imagine that, well, nonetheless, that fact is nonetheless brute. The fact that it depends on its parts or whatever, or what, like you might oh. ask, like that, that, and if that's the case, well, then you can imagine the, prem the premises being true with the conclusion being false. And when you do something like as basic as categorical logic, they teach you when you're doing Venn diagrams, that if you can find... The thing is, though, the thing is, though within the arguments I presented prior, and when I talked about the arguments I presented, I even said within like, one of his responses towards my argument that I grant that the, the complex beings are, in fact, non-contingent, right? They're necessary. So under my argument, or given the original format of the argument, it would be the case that... Um, it would, I think it would actually entail by certain like, model logic axioms, given like the simple being being a necessary and sufficient condition, that it would actually be the case that all things in that specific reality is necessary. So now that you've actually cleared up that misunderstanding that I had in the falling god, it would actually not be the case that his version of the argument to be properly reflective of the concept of the argument that I presented originally, given that they've already granted that all beings under my view is necessary, and I believe that this follows from the argument that I presented. Yeah, but look, the facts about what your worldview are going to be independent of the argument, right? But you might say that there's other reasons you know, for why, given this argument, under your view, like everything is just going to be necessary. But if it's not implicit in the argument, it's not going to follow that because of the argument that everything is necessary. So you think like whatever potential entail on the argument is going to be isolated from the argument itself? No, I'm saying whatever, you know, is entailed by your view plus the argument in conjunction with the argument, that's going to be independent of what the argument itself produces. Yeah, I don't see why this will really cause a where if you were to agree that this thing, let's say, for example, some, some proposition X is entailed from this argument being considered a sound, right? I don't really know how it is understandable or intelligible for one to make the assertion that this specific entailment from the argument would actually be something which we should analyze independently of the argumentative content, which if we were to be grant or if we were to grant to be true or sound maybe, it would actually follow that this proposition is actually true. No, when you value when you evaluate an argument to see whether or not I should I hate that smell. When you evaluate an argument to see whether or not it's sound well, obviously, you're not doing it from, like, the perspective of beliefs of other people or whatever, whatever. But right now, we're, it's not even about soundness. At least for me, it isn't. Maybe for other people. And you can, you know, take your quarrels with them. But at least what mm -hmm. I think at is just validity. And you can, and, and basic categorical logic, when you're doing something like Venn diagrams, they tell you if you can imagine the premises being true and the, conc and and the, the conclusion negation, being false. Yeah, yeah. And the negation conclusion. Um, mm hmm then it's going to be just, it's just going to be the case of the argument. Yeah, I actually agree with your interpretation of what's being stated regarding his argument. I think I'm, I skimmed over some important details and just quickly agreed the arguments to be filed without actually paying full attention to certain like possibilities, whereas the premises are actually sure the conclusion is false. However, I still believe, and the way I, I think like when you're mentioning the idea that certain metaphysical analyses, these things would be something which is independent of like the argument that they form. I agree with this in some extent, but I believe that in this debate more specifically, I think that it was something that's almost indispensable in understanding or in the process of understanding the argument being valid and sound. So I think yeah, that to look, eliminate this from the conversation, we're not, I'm not saying in your case it's disingenuous, but yeah, yeah, it's an look, incomplete way of scrutinizing the argumentative quality that they present. Yeah, look, it, it doesn't matter whether or not it's like you think it's indispensable. If you take any course in logic, you ask any logician, any professor that teaches logic, they're, if they're evaluating the validity of arguments, they don't care about the content of somebody's view going into it. Validity is something that you can check just from the rules of inference and the axioms of... Yeah, the form. Yeah. Right? And so I that's going to be... Part. And so what you said now... Yeah, like, the thing is that you have to understand that now that you've clarified the argument, and I've already agreed that I mis misunderstood um, some of the potential entailments that follows from the form of his argument or the form that he um, was trying to represent to represent my argument, I think that 
now that I've understood this over lies or cashed on to this misinterpretation, I can firmly agree that this argument should not be properly reflective of the argument that I was presenting. Okay, so where's the argument that you gave? Um, it's way up, and like they have been given like different versions of my argument. I'm gonna post it real quick. The, Mason was pinging you. To, Mason was calling you to see if the argument was invalid or not. Yeah, there's that, no. That's not that's not the original version that I presented. Hold on. Oh, actually, to be clear, yeah. actually that wasn't actually true because the argument is obviously that was a, that invalid. Was a I was actually telling Colin God to come and God's laugh at you for making a fool of yourself. Over Alright, so obviously the argument's invalid. That's clear to everyone who's not an idiot, right? So, I just told Fallen God to actually come look at how dumb you are. Right, that's why I told him. So, so, retard, so, retard, you think, like, you claim in an aggressive tone that, that, that this fat guy accent, that the argument is clearly invalid, is going to be an argument for why it is invalid. No, it is not, by the way, it's not good evidence. In fact, every time you attempted to demonstrate the argument being invalid, you got completely dunked on so embarrassingly that you went on mute multiple times, thinking of a new response before you come back to me to swap hands, right? Which is why I called your you? daddy falling God, and you required Amder's help over here. Well, actually, Amder's Can you reproduce the reasoning for why oh, yeah, you never presented the argument was invalid? The argument was invalid. And in fact, your presentation of my argument got revised so many times, like at least two times, I think, due to the fact that see, one of the premises did not Can you reproduce the reasoning in my for why the arg I said the argument was invalid? So, so, following God, I'm just going to ping it to the actual argument that I presented in the chat. Oh, you're going to go to my question. At least okay. the perspective yeah. was on there. You don't but have to answer, you can also the argument the is based off the conclusion there, but not being included within the premises. Send the argument. I'll just ping it to the argument. Oh, by the way, no. Right, if the argument isn't invalid, we've already asked them there are two things you can do. One, you can tell us what the inference is. There are three things actually, not we. Two, you, asked you can show us how the argument, how the form evaluates the valid. And they're asking how he still, present, still hasn't done either of those options. Which, if for it to be denied, right, so not only is he dodging my question now, he also still hasn't false. provided to like, fulfill any of the options we provided to him. To him earlier. How to actually connect it conceptually to the conclusion. So it's not just those two options. Amda presented the, another option outside those two options that you presented and have already fulfilled that. Whether or not you want to accept it is up to you. I don't care. I could care less. Wait, so just to be clear, like, if the version I presented yeah. is wrong, what's the correction we can make to this version I presented so that it represents what you're trying to say? And then we can just run it through the truth table again and see if it's valid. Yeah, okay. let's just try to do that. Hmm. Well, let's see here. This is early, not a good in fact. Yeah, there's something missing here. Okay, so POI simple P. Wait, Amdir, shouldn't the conclusion be brute contingency are impossible? Yeah, that is the conclusion. Or, oh, he changed it. He wanted it changed to false. Because there's no more the logic there, but they're being included within the arguments. It's going to be unclear what impossible means, and so you can I mean, you can have some like. Although, although to be fair, all yeah, to be fair, yes, there are model variables necessarily be like a model. There's no issue. You don't need. You don't necessarily like. It's not the case that every time you use the word impossible or possible in an argument, it's not the case that you need to use modal variables. Like you can just. It, have is, it is the case that this is something which is necessary for clarity purposes. Not the case that it is necessary for you could say the analysis of whether the argument that the form is valid or not. But I think the clarity purposes um, is going to be something which is conducive. I'm just saying you, you, you literally just need, the don't need the variables. For example, if I had an argument that said something like, um, "If I draw a truth table for some expression, and the expression comes out as false in all cases, then the expression is impossible," and I just mow disponents from that. I don't need modal quantifiers anywhere. Nevertheless, I'm used. I'm, my conclusion is that some expression. So, is so yeah, I think you're kind of like just being disingenuous here because nobody made the claim that it is absolutely necessary for one to require modal variables being included within an argument for the argument to be analyzed or for the argument to be valid. I said I preferred for him to not use this. He agreed to this preference. He said, "Okay, just going to exclude the impossible." Impossible. I mean, yeah, you can. Okay, for yeah, sure. purposes. Yeah, you can yeah, say so, you prefer, so in other words, just went on the whole rant. Yeah, you can say you prefer to not have... I, we, 
I just don't care about that preference. So if you don't like, care about that, why are you the original to argument the is just that something well, is impossible? I think it is necessary. Why not just capture the original argument? So are you skits rambling really about whether care about the preference or not necessary, necessary for there to be modal variables if that was supposedly not in response to any of the claims that I was making more? Yeah, so we'll like whatever um, See, you're new just argument you're just we're doing, let's retard. just put the conclusion the folks the as this thing is impossible and just try to capture his reasoning anyway. No, we got, we got and we can have it. I mean, given the fact that he's like paused and so on. Because like concluding that group contingency is very obvious that you're going to be successful to capture what the original argument is trying to make the time. And I strongly suspect that he's just going to be like the original argument. I'm just going to go back to, I'm just going to go back to analyze Amdo's argument and fill in the missing spots, which is needed for the argument to be considered as valid apparently. Okay? So. Is are one of these so out of the four premises here? Are one of them uh, irrepresentative of the original argument? Wait, wait, hold on there a second. PO is what exactly? Um, positive, uh, positive ontological item. Wait, ho wait, pardon? Uh, positive ontological item. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, by the way, did anybody check if he signed off on Sully's? Form because we might not even need to. Um, or we can ask that after. Mm. Mm. So, who's winning so far? Not Apollo. Emder, did you see the argument Sully wrote out? And uh, yeah, it's in debate chat here. Where? Hold on, can you can you tell uh, me? It's in chat. Again? Oh, that one right there. Um. Although the thing is that, like, but Sully, this one, I don't think. Yours doesn't conclude with um, group contingencies are impossible either. Although, could, wait, is it? I don't know if Apollo is doing it this. Concludes, could... Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. It concludes with, like, necessarily there exists uh, an X such that X is simple. Yeah, that's... I think, I think the argument is just going to be invalid in virtue of, like, the second premise and how it reflects the, the modality of the brute... I guess the the facts are not real, given the fact that they're dependent on something else. So because the modality of those entities are going to be unclear, that leaves open the possibility of there being some other objects or there being an object under this specific, um, uh, you could say, metaphysical status or profile, which is actually necessary but not dependent. Hold or on, is, necessary but dependent, sorry. Do you agree, that, so hold on, do you agree that premise two of the original argument, the way that it was originally formulated, was um, if POI is complex, then it is necessarily not a brute fact, given that it necessarily depends on certain existential parts for existential sustainability. Is that what the because that's what we that's what I have right right here, uh, Apollo, is premise two of the original form formulation. Well, I think that I think that specifically I think that specifically if you want to be like really pedantic about this, maybe it is a case that given the form of the argument or the way that you're reflecting it, it is actually invalid. However, there are certain things that you're actually not well, covering over, like for example, I'm just asking certain, that, yeah, so like certain agreements, like certain agreements that we both made. Hold on, hold on, like certain agreements we both made, like regarding whether the dichotomy is like some like, 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 possible. Can, yeah, yeah. can we just like cut through the yes. ramble and just discuss the form here? Is that premise two of the original? We're not, sure, we're not just rambling here, we're trying to like get well, no, clear on certain stuff. Which I think like, we're all I'm asking is a simple here. question about premise two of the original, yes, yeah, and then premise two of the version I gave says if POI is is uh simple. Then it is necessarily, or sorry, if POI is complex, um, no, if POI is simple. Wait, hold on, let me go back to the original one. Yeah, so, um, oh, if complex, yeah, so POI is simple or it's complex. Um, if it's simple, okay, so this should actually be Q. So if it's, um, 
And then Q is complex, so then if it's simple T, okay. Q, Q, T, okay, sorry. So I just had those switched around there. That, that should fix it. Now P2 is exactly the same as in the original argument. It says, P2 just says, if POI is complex, then it is necessarily not a brute given fact, given that it depends on certain existential parts for existential sustainability. That's word for word what the original argument says in P2. The version of the argument that, um, that so you say that the premise two accurately reflects the second premise of my argument. I'm going to check the second premise real quick. But I just looked over like Soli's version, and that actually is fully identical to the concept they're referring to, or I'm actually trying to articulate. Yeah, but Soli's version <clears throat> doesn't doesn't um, conclude in that brute contingency is false or brute contingency is impossible. Well, the thing is that it concludes such if under some given like uh, metaphysical views that one would have to cash out outside the argument, which is why I have multiple different arguments separate outside of this argument. But this argument is morally, um, morally focused on establishing the impossibility of brute contingency with like the set of facts within the argument as well as some other things that we can actually cash out while determining the facts of the matter regarding the premises of the argument. So do you agree then that the <clears throat> argument that concludes in brute contingency is false or brute contingency is impossible, that that's an invalid argument? The argument that I presented, I'm not sure about this. You know, I'm going to have to check the second premise first to see if the second premise of my original argument is identical to the concept of the argument that you're presenting in your version before I can attest to or disagree with the idea that it is actually valid. Yeah, this is, <clears throat> hold on, let me just tag you. I corrected the... Uh, just just copy and paste my argument so that you can just find it quickly because I'm on mobile currently. Yeah, here. Here's... Um, actually, I'll copy and paste both of them. Um, here. my version and your version. By the, when I say the pinging me to my argument, I was not talking about pinging me to Mason, like whatever the fuck he typed, because I didn't even read that shit. That's copy and pasted from the one you posted earlier. <laughs> Let's check real quick. It's funny, like I just copy and copied and pasted when he wrote it, and he said like I. <laughs> he said it was a different argument. And he never he said it was a different argument. Have... Yeah, the copy never and said pasted was from you are a different argument. argument. Good job. I was talking to the copy and paste of Amder's argument that you posted. Good job there. I think I should be getting the undisputed role after this one. Just saying. Yeah, but like, if if he, if Apollo ranks you really high, he, then everybody else will think like you're like stupid or something. <laughs> oh, that, that's a good point. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, when I was like fucking making those comments about validity, I was talking about this argument right here. Yeah, yeah it is what it is. Wait, so right now, to be clear, right now we're trying to figure out whether the form you just posted him there, whether he signs off on that as whether, a representative? Yeah, whether it's like identical to the form, the argument he originally okay. posted. Okay, cool, fair enough. Oh, what is PO? Oh, positive ontological item. Yeah.
Is it just me or is no one talking? We're we're waiting for Apollo to see if this argument. Yeah, is I'm back. Okay, so I'm looking at like the arguments and so forth. So like um, so apparently like if complex, then not brute. If simple, then necessary. Okay, so you think that the possibility of there being some cause or some dependent necessary being would falsify the thesis of it being followed from the argument that it is impossible for brute contingency to be the case? No, it's just valid in virtue of the form, in virtue of the fact that if we draw out the truth table here with these four premises and this conclusion, there's going to be spots, there's going to be rows on the truth table where all the premises evaluate to true and the conclusion evaluates to false. Okay, so let me just look at the argument once more. Just focus on my arguments. Okay, so why is necessary not a given fact? Okay. It's like he's look. It like you're saying QI is part. necessarily not a brute given fact that it necessarily depends on certain essential parts for existential sustainability. So that's going to be the complex one. That's going to be Q. Mm -hmm. Q implies. Q implies not. So necessary, so necessary positive ontological set, um, I think they here just going to be T. It's like taking forever. So, so wait a second. So the first, so the first part, just to be clear, the first part of the third premise you're talking about, right? POI being necessarily another brute given fact, that allows, like in that thing, that allows for the impossibility of brute, or that thing being brute. Because assuming that this thing is actually, um, uh, or the the metaphysical law that's being employed here is actually true. So this complex being is not brute. That's going to be necessarily true. Granted that premise, and under the second horn, right, it's going to be the case that. Whatever simple being is necessary. So, so I take it that you're just like questioning like the specific link between like the the argumentative premises that are being laid out and the idea that the simple being is necessary, right? No, the the idea is a link between the premises and the conclusion that brute contingency is false or impossible. That it just doesn't follow. I can like post the truth table again for for why it doesn't follow. It's well to be clear. Um, before like, can we make sure that like I, I just understand the argument before I give the response? Because like, like, I'm not saying like, a couple of just... stuff and I like maps out to my arguments. It doesn't matter. Like, be being really analytical right here. Don't hurt yourself too much. Oh, is he, is he still reading? It's like very few words. Going on for like 10 minutes. <laughs> Name is chat dead.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, I think I could summarize like what his argument is, but I mean, all this. I think there's been too much talk about like the sort of validity of this argument. Like, you could make this argument valid. But the, um, problem, the problem is when you make this argument but, valid the way that you did, it doesn't conclude in. No, 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 but that's not the whole. That's not the whole argument, right? Like, I mean, I could tell you what the what the other premises that he would want are. To get to this conclusion about, I guess, I'm back. I'm back. You know, um, one of the, one of the things I, that I, I even said, like for the, like the second premise, one of the, I think it was the second or the third premise when he asked like to just for the third premise, and let's go back to the P one. I was saying like obviously the third premise could like need some like extra premises, but, like there's like certain like um, immediate inferences that are being implied um, under you could say the table or whatever. But yeah, um, let's look at like your arguments real quick, right? So you you're basically saying looking? that. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, someone like interrupted me, my bad. Um, but um, I was gonna say, that you look at like your argument, for example, you're just saying that like, even if we're to grant that um, given any complex object, this thing is not brute, or given that, given any, pro yeah, given any complex object, this thing is not brute, or given any simple object, this being is necessary. If it would be the case that, or would it be the case that brute contingency is impossible, because even under this dichotomy which is being granted, it is still possible for there to be like some brute contingent facts, correct? If you need like extra premises to get there, then the argument as given just wouldn't be valid then, because it doesn't get you to the conclusion of the argument. So wait a second, so you're saying that because it needs extra premises being laid out explicitly, the argument form itself wouldn't be valid? Yeah. But to, but to be clear, do you think that all premises, do you think like all arguments, like when you look at the form of an argument, for example, and you have like certain laid out premises, do you believe that all of these arguments are, like the argument form is only hinged upon these premises, or do you believe that there are like some sub premises which are being enacted? You could say it could be placed, put into practice implicitly for the sake of justifying the argument being valid and sound. I think that if the argument's going to be valid, then there's going to be some explicit connection between the premises and the conclusion such that the premises guarantee the truth of the conclusion. So he's now signed off on the oh, argument of the representative or not? That's unclear. Oh, can we just get a clear answer to that first? I don't... Do you take that to represent the argument you were giving, Apollo? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, my mic was bugging. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. So, another thing in response to what you're saying, like you're just saying that the for, for an argument to be considered to be valid, there has to be like some explicit connection um, between the explicit premises which are being laid out and the conclusion, respectively. That's how validity. Without the need for extra premises. In formal logic, but the do you sign off on this? Is this is this representative of your argument? I don't remember your answer towards my question because if you are depending on the answer towards my question, I can say, well, yes, it is, or yes, it is, or no, it isn't, I should say. Well, the, the answer to, so your answer to the question of whether or not this is representative of your argument is not going to, like, hinge on what my views about validity are. Yeah, so I guess you're just saying that, well, like, because as Sol is talking about, like, we have, like, similar views, and I believe that, like, there's some obvious entailments from some of the given premises, but when you're talking about like some entailments being obvious or not obvious, that's just, just going to like differ from person to person. So you don't believe like certain entailments that I believe are entailed from certain given like granted propositions are going to be obvious. And as, as a result of this, for you to grant the argument to be valid, you have to, or rather, I would be some, I'd be obliged to given these specific obvious um, entailments that I believe are entailed. Well, for the propositions in the argument for you. Do you think the form is representative? All, all, all I'm saying is that for an argument to be valid, preferably one of the entailments of the premises is going to be the conclusion. Yes, and I believe the conclusion is entailed, but you're saying the conclusion is not entailed, given the fact that the argument at face value given the current premises on the table that you're aware of, without being aware of the the other premises that would obviously be into play in the process of justifying the argument itself, 
given those current premises, it would not suffice to demonstrate in the connection between the premises and the conclusion for it to be considered to be valid. Usually when people write out a formal argument and they explicitly write out like the propositional variables, the necessity operators, the implications, etc. The, the reason they're doing that is to like show some entailment between the, uh, the premises and the conclusion. So if like you're just saying, yeah, and I believe that there can be, the, I, th I believe that's, and I believe they can agree with this. Uh, there can be like an entailment between like two propositions, like like P and some others to the propositions Q and R. But at the same time, the you could say the way in which the argument is being written out, like in terms of like the language that's being utilized, isn't clear enough for the interlocutor or the opposing interlocutor to grant the argument to be valid, but. Given the conceptual nature of the argument, which obviously the, for the, the proponent would be aware of, the argument would be valid, but you're not actually accessible or you're not actually accessing or able to access that, that the, concept that the argument is hinged on. The con I mean, the conceptual nature of the argument is just going to be something about the, the content, but what we're what we're, what's in dispute here is not the content. What's well, I'm not talking about just the content. I'm not just talking about the dispute. Like, like I said, like, I think that there's, what's, what's there's ways to make this. Hold on. What's what's in dispute here is the forums. Like, there's a few ways yeah. to go forward here. Like, one of the ways to go forward is you could tell me that this uh, formalization I gave is representative of your argument, or you could you could tell me it's not represented representative of your argument and and point out to me how to correct it, or you could go with the original formulation of your argument and show that that's valid through either validity checker or validity. Mm -hmm. um, or just give the explicit information. Yeah, the, the thing is, though, the thing is, though, when you're talking about, like, um, to determine whether the form of the argument that you presented is actually something which maps onto my argument, I think I cannot say it is because of the fact, which is that your argument, given the, given church of commitments you have in the background, um, excludes <laughs> some necessary, about the content. you could say, we're talking about the content. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, not just, we're not just talking about the content, right? Because, yeah, again, it's not just the content, which I'm criticizing, and it's not just a lack of content, which I'm criticizing, oh, but also some other given oh, propositions, which you're not aware of, which would be conducive to the validity of the argument we felt in So, format. Apollo, do you understand the difference between, like, soundness and validity? Yes, I do, I definitely do. Yeah, what about so it? When you're, when you're talking about the validity. It's about the soundness of an argument. You're talking about whether the argument follows and the premises the, are true individually. Yeah. When you're talking about an argument being valid, you're just saying that the argument, given the premises and the structure of the argument, if the premises are to be granted, then the conclusion would follow necessarily. Yeah, very good. You got like a gold star. But what I'm saying here <laughs> is that the premise is that what's in content, the soundness is going to depend on the content. The validity is not going to depend on the content. We could just like plug in random shit for each one of these propositional variables like p p is just made a claim that the validity hinges on the content more what we're saying is that what we're saying is that what i'm saying simply is that you are not aware of certain proposition the proposition i'm talking about is the content related okay you're on mute now so look p could just be pink unicorns exist q could be like apollo's a retard t could be like etern the b theory of time is true and then m is just like i have a million dollars in my bank account it doesn't matter what you plug in for the variables. What's in contention here is the form. It's not the content. It's going to be invalid regardless of what the, the content is. So try to address what's actually in contention, which is the form, and don't just ramble about the content and background commitments. Let's talk about the content, retard. So is this representative of your argument or no? And if not, why? No, it isn't. And why? We're not talking about the background commitments in Kant. We're talking about certain set of propositions which are entailed from the propositions which are actually established, which are not mentioned explicitly within the argument. Why does he just like randomly keep not going the ability like, of the argument so, overall? I don't... <laughs> so, okay, Apollo. And it's the reason why, for example, Solar City can easily make the argument valid in the sense that you're talking about. Are you because saying, the commitments are pretty clear. Are you saying and that's all the, the content of the argument? Be clear, are you saying that the entailments that are meant that are explicitly mentioned in premises one through four, that those entailments don't get you to uh, to five? Is that what you're saying? When you're saying those entailments, are you saying those entailments at face value or those entailments when you're investigating the, the, the rigorous concepts of all of these propositions? The because obviously we're talking about the ladder, so it's the just going to be entailed. Are premises one through four getting you to five, yes or no? Yes. In, in the formulation that I gave? No. 
So it, my formulation is different than the formulation you gave. Yes. Which premise is different? My formulation is just talking about like the linguistical articulations of the arguments, no, like how, like how the the logic, like the logic variables, the connection, and all that shit. Because yes. if so, you could say yes, it is not actually different. But if we're going to be talking about like the entailment in, in the sense where, like, how is the premises connected to the conclusion, right? Then obviously, it's just not going to be the case that the argument is properly reflective of such. Because I think my argument is able to properly account for why brute contingency would be impossible, right? Whereas your argument cannot. Because it is excluding some propositions which you said would be required to do my am argument I, for you to consider. Am I excluding any to propositions that are in your original formalization of the argument? You're asking me for like the any explicit propositions within your argument, which is not a part of my argument, which would make it the case that your argument is invalid, no, or that my argument is not. Valid. No, I'm asking you because you look. If my argument is different than your argument, then presumably there's some premise that's included. In your argument, that's not included in my argument. Yeah, I'm just not clear. Tell me means in this case, right? Because I was investigating the concept of entailment. Argument, or there's some premise of my argument that's different, that the content of which is different from um, your argument. So I'm asking you which of those three it is, or if the arguments are the same. Sorry, I, I had you muted. Go ahead. Yeah, so anyways, as I was saying, I got like four more minutes left before I like go to pray. So the thing is that you're saying that you're questioning whether the argument is different in so far as there's like some entailment or there's not an entailment given the premise that I've laid out within my argument. And I'm for one unclear what they mean by entailment here because I just take it to be the case that any, uh, any type of argument which involves like some sort of logical validity where, where it's like the premises or given the premises, the conclusion is entailed, there are going to obviously be some conceptual commitments given certain propositions, which makes the form of the argument valid or not valid. But sorry, that, I'm sorry, one, conceptual commitments aren't making an argument valid or invalid. Again, wait. validity and invalidity is a, is a feature of the structure. It's not a feature of the content. Second of all, the, you're not answering the question that I asked you. The que you said the argument that I gave is different from the argument you gave. So the question I asked you is, is one of the following three things true? One, there's a premise in my argument that's not in your formalization of the argument. Two, there's a premise of your argument that's not in my formalization. Or three, there's a premise in my argument, the content of which is different from your argument. And if one of those three is true, which of those three is it? I think you're just like looking at the tree here, not the entire forest. Because if you're actually paying attention to what I was actually saying previously, you'd realize that the question you're asking have been already rendered ridiculous and redundant to what I'm saying. Right? Because what I'm saying here specifically is that when you're talking about or when you're investigating whether the arguments that you presented and the argument that I presented are actually identical, you're strictly looking at all of the variables and the, whether, it, like you could say, the explicit form of the variables that we mentioned, right? And I do not believe that it's only the explicit, they, I don't believe that it is only the explicit form, sorry, which determines an argument being valid or invalid. I think it is a conjunct of both the explicit form of the argument as well as certain propositions which might not be explicitly mentioned within the form of the argument that's being typed out, that's being typed out in the chat, which Sorry. determines an argument being entailed or not entailed. Sorry, I'm not even asking about that. All I'm asking is if the form of You're the asking about gave, whether all one I'm argument is whether the form of the argument I gave is different than the form of the argument you gave. Now, is it the case that the form of the argument I gave is different than the form of the argument you gave? I've already explained to you that it is. I've told you that it is, and I've already explained to you it why it is, oh, in it fact, is different. different. Okay, so if it is different, then the question I have is, is there a premise in your argument that's not in my argument? Is there a premise in uh, my argument that's not in your argument? Or is there a premise that's different in my argument versus your argument? Just simply that if you're just going to say, is there any premise which is within my argument, which is not within your argument? If you're just looking at things from face value without actually properly analyzing the argument that I presented, then maybe you could make a case for them being identical. But under your analysis of an argument being valid or invalid, that would not be a proper means of actually evaluating whether the argument the reform argument. actually works or you're, successful you're like, in demonstrating the conclusion Jesus. be true. Okay, you're like retarded. So again, the argument, I, I'm not interpreting the premises. I'm not looking at background commitments, okay? All I'm doing is I'm just spitting out words. I'm like a machine. I'm like a robot that doesn't have mental states. I'm spitting out these words, these propositional variables onto the, onto the Discord chat room, okay? And all I'm asking you is, is the form, is the way these variables are set up, is that the same as the form of your original argument? And if no, 
then which premise is not, um, is, is not identical to a premise of your original argument, or what premise is added or subtracted? is completely redundant to determine the validity of the arbitrary not that's just obviously going to be wrong right the content of the argument is going to be what is reflective or what is being reflected by the variables that you're utilizing and i'm saying that there's some other variables that you're missing from the argument that you've been presented or that you think is being presented which would actually indubitably demonstrate the argument being valid and as long as those variables are missing due to the lack of con conceptual data that's been involved in your I'm argument. Asking, given it's your not going to be the case that I can consider your argument to be identical your, to my argument look, for the first time. Interpret them however you like. Interpret. I'm asking about the the words in the argument. You're asking for my interpretation. What do you mean by interpreting whatever I like? You're asking for my interpretation of your argument, you, look, whether it is actually valid or invalid. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> if, the, if the premises are word for word identical, when you plug in the, the phrases for the propositional variables, if it ends up word for word identical to your original argument, then so long as you're interpreting the premises the same way... When you say word for word identical, you've got to be really careful with that terminology, right? Is the, do you understand what I'm saying? Of course I understand what you're saying, but the way that you're articulating it is poorly, so I'm saying that you've got to be careful with the terminology you're utilizing. So, look, is the, given... Look, given that you understand the propositional variables the same way in both arguments, is there a difference? Yes, I've already told you the difference. Given that you understand the propositional variables the same way in both arguments. I've already told you that there's a difference, yeah. And yeah, even so asked you the so question, then, which so you've not yet, the, not yet, yeah, so then you have yet to answer, which is simply what it would actually be the case that given the structure of your argument, it would be the case that brute contingency is possible. Yeah, wait, can you, can you identify the premise that's different? Yeah, the, the, premise, the premise that's different is simply it's simply going to be based on like this. I think it's like the second premise. Like, let me look at the argument real quick. Yeah. Holy, holy shit, it's prior time. Give me a so premise two says, like, if PO I'm going to wrap this up like two minutes before I go to pray. Yeah, so premise Hold two on. is of my argument is if POI is complex, then it is necessarily not a brute given fact that necessarily depends on certain essential parts for its existential sustainability. And then P2 of your argument is if complex, it's necessarily not a brute fact given that it necessarily depends on certain essential parts for its existential sustainability. Now, is your view that those two premises are different from each other? I'm looking for the arguments in chat, actually. Wait, I'll request it one second. Yeah, copy and paste. Yeah, people be typing, copy and paste the arguments. I just linked it. It's here. I, here I have it um, side by side. It's also in the main chat too. Okay. Okay. I'm looking at the arguments. I want to respond like right now, but I gotta go pray. I don't want to like run away from this. Um, yeah, I find like just two more minutes, and then we're just like I gotta like leave because like I gotta pray, Margaret. So for any objects, I'm there. Are you fine with this or no? Uh, what was it? Or rather, whether or not you're fine with this, it's not gonna be relevant. It's not gonna be relevant anyway because I still gotta go pray anyway. So, um, so I think like the difference. I think the difference is just gonna be. I think niggas keep on tapping in chat. Can, can you read, well, like, can you read P2 out loud of my formalization? Yeah, I'll read P2 for both arguments. Yeah, go ahead. P2 from the argument that I see from my arguments. If complex, that means it is necessarily not a given fact. P2 in your argument you could say it's identical. But hold on there a second. P1 for any object X, it is merely complex or merely logically simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you read them out loud, P2? Yeah, I'm, P2. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to delay prior. I'm going to have to pray right now. 
Well, before you go pray, can you read them out loud, P2 of both arguments? No, I've already said that P2 of both arguments are identical, but I'm gonna, I can't do anything else before I go pray. Okay, go, so we go got a right discussion now. on that. Oh, I'm fine. Why do we get <laughs> Wait, wait, hold on there a second. P2, P2 being identical in terms of like the way is being linguistically articulated in both arguments is not the same as saying, me saying that both arguments are identical. You asked me to demonstrate both arguments being identical or being not identical. <laughs> not that P2 is not identical to the P2 within my argument. So, so I, there's no concession on that yeah. part. I asked you that if you interpret... Not have established, not, so not have established this. All right, go ahead. Not have established this. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to come back. Yo, Rewancher, save the recording real quick. Really God to help get, get, get a valid back, argument. Okay? <laughs> yeah, okay, so I asked you, given that you interpret the premises of both arguments the same, you interpret all the terms the same, then is there going to be a difference between the two arguments? You said yes. I asked you what premise the difference is in. You said P2. So now you've read out P2 and you've said that they're identical. So I'll ask you again, like, what premise is the difference P2? in? In fact, the entire time I've been saying, the entire time I've been saying that I agree in the sense where if you, you were to say that, like, if you look at like, the, the propositions or the proposition, propositional variables, which are being represented with the arguments, yes, maybe they're actually identical, but under my view of entailment and validity, it's just not going to be the case that I believe that it's just the explicit form of the arguments which determines an argument being valid or invalid. Oh my god. You, like, didn't track anything, like any part of the last 30 minutes of the conversation. I tracked everything that you've been saying this far. You've been asking me to demonstrate any specific premise within my argument um, that is actually distinct from your argument, so that you could tweak your argument to make it actually be valid, and to actually render my argument to be valid. Like that was what you've been you, asking for the past if, 30 if, minutes. So are you saying that the and I've already to this sufficiently for the past 30 minutes, so I don't get what you're rambling on about. Now, let's just, like, I stipulated that the conceptual, like, I, I, I stipulated... Look, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go pray, dude. Yeah, yeah I, gotta, I gotta go pray. Um... That's fine. I stipulated that the the way that each term in the argument is understood is just going to be understood in the same way that it's understood in your original argument. So any difference in that point is going to be a difference in the inf the actual inferences that are being made. So that's why I'm asking you to identify like an issue with the inferences being made, and you're not able to do that. Is, is Apollo coming back, or is he, like, gone now? I, well, he's gonna go, um, ask God to help him, like, track the conversation, and then he'll come back, hopefully. Okay. I don't know if God will help him here. <laughs> uh, it, it's just funny how he said the different premise was P2, and he said, actually... <laughs> Here is that actually P2 is the same one. Wait, was was P2 the only one that he said was... Did he say anything else? Did he object any other no. part of it? Or? Okay. Okay, I mean... And has he agreed that, has he, is there any premise like for which he's like agreed that this is just the same, like this is represented like my premise accurately or whatever? What was that? Has he, is there any premise for which he's just agreed that this is an accurate representation of his version? Yeah, no, I disagree. Like all of them. Okay, all of, <laughs> okay. Shut up, pussy, I stop bringing Wait, up. sorry, Shut let me mute pussy, this guy one second. Oh, he left. I was more interested in like the concept level part of what you were saying because um, this idea that because they are complexes, they must be simple is wrong. Nerds. Pussy ass bitch ass ugly ass hoe ass nigga named Brandon a vat ugly ass pussy ass nigga. You look like a wasp, ugly bitch ass hoe ass. Uh, the mute button on Discord is so nice. I don't even know if he's like still like talking about me. I like the second he joined in, I just muted him. He might like be still, like he might still like be talking. About oh, is this guy coming back? Hey, 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 hey! 
in the back. Oh, by the way, Fallen God is telling us to all VC somewhere. I don't. Where? Uh, can you just DM me where where it is, Mustafa? I don't know. Go to play. Yeah, it's in the It's in. It's in the Okay, I'll head over there. Nerd. <laughs>